Hello, I am Lizzie with Long Distance Gamers. We are a group of friends who play games remotely due to us living in different states. Today we will be talking about Gloomhaven. What do I think about it? And more importantly, how do we play it remotely? Now before we get started, there are two different sides. The random side, which does have a copy of the game, and they run it mostly like normal. The remote side may or may not have a copy of the game. We will be going over how the remote side plays and how the remote side sets up. As this is a campaign game, we are doing the very first scenario with the three of the starting classes. Now, if you don't want any spoilers whatsoever, feel free to reach out to us and we will do our best to help you learn how to play remotely without spoilers. This is Gloomhaven set up remotely. The random side will determine what number each of the monsters are and all other sides will update accordingly. For our group, we do have a copy on every side, so we are able to divvy out the responsibilities of the game. The random side will be in charge of the initiative for the monsters, and then the remote side will organize them numerically. That way you could easily see if there are two of the same numbers, and then you can ask which one, and there's a handy dandy little small number in the corner that the random side could then tell you which one to place. And then I am on the remote side, but I control the monster's deck as well as my own deck. And each side controls each of their own deck as well. We have the player set up with their market cards, with their lifelong goal, as well as their player cards. For the battle cards, the random side will take a picture of the two of your cards that you have to choose from and send them to you. If you have a copy of the game, feel free to grab out whichever one you keep and place it down, or you could just tell them which one you want to keep and then they would just update it on their end. If you do only have one copy of the game, I would highly recommend sending whoever it is that is on the remote side a copy of their character. So if the Mind Thief, I would send them this box with everything in it, one of the dials for them to keep track of, as well as their chosen lifelong goal. With this also, I would go ahead and send them the box so that way if they do go to retire, you're not waiting on the mail to get them their new character. For the market items, there is a nice PDF that someone posted online that we will have a link in the description. They have nice pretty pictures of all the items in the market and we would recommend that the remote side that does not have a copy, printing those off so that they could either cut out the ones that they have or be able to just look through the market easier. As far as for gameplay goes, everyone will be choosing their cards simultaneously. Once everybody has decided what cards they will play, they will verbally say so. If I'm the credit card, for instance, I will choose my two cards. I keep them on the ledge right up here, so that way I can easily see what the cards say. And then once everybody has said what they will be playing, we go by whichever card is on top, we say that name first, followed by the other name. So for instance, this is Avalanche Rumbling. If there are two words, we just say the very first one. So that way the other sides will know what my initiative is. And then the other players will tell me what theirs are. So Provoking, Overwhelming, for instance, Submissive Into. And then we are ready to go. So we have the Brute is gonna be 10 followed by the Mind Thief at 48, and then the Craig Hart at 75. The only thing left is for the random side to determine what the initiative is for these, so they will go ahead and say that the initiative is 55. So I would go ahead and pull 55 and put that on top, and then we can go ahead and get started. Just to say what you're going to do. For movement though, we do use this hex. The LDG stands for Long Distance Gamers. That is where you currently are. So you will go ahead and move out the number that is in each of these lines. So we actually have a nice pretty one that our graphic designer Brooksby made. So for instance, if the brute gets to move two, he would say, I want to move out my six and then out my one. So that way we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So he moved six and then one moved one. That way it's very easy to say what is going on, how you're moving. If you are next to a monster, you can say, I will be attacking, this one's number one, so I'll be attacking the guard one or the guard five. That way everyone can update 
and know what is going on. Once a player has played, their cards will go ahead in their applicable discard pile. If we are short on space, I will sometimes put the discards here and the losts here. So that way there's a little bit more space available. Also for the, the modifier cards that will be added in, if they do not have a copy of the game, I would send them three or four of both the curses and the blessings. And then if there comes time that they're needing more than what they have on their end, I would house rule that the first ones or however many that need to come out are just the standard times two and the standard miss and then you would reshuffle the deck back in and then just keep track so if you need to have two extra curses the first two times you get a curse you would just reshuffle your deck and just remember that you only need to do it one more time that is gloomhaven remotely as you can see, a few minor modifications makes it so that this game can be played and enjoyed from states apart. The biggest struggle we came across was how do we define how we are moving. Once we came up with the movement tool, it became much easier. For remote play, this has been a fantastic experience and has actually been the only way I've played this version of Gloomhaven. I have played Gloomhaven Jaws the Lion in person and it plays relatively the same. I do feel this is a great game to play remotely regardless if you are playing with one copy or with two, especially if you can show the movement tool to all sides so that they can easily see how they can move. Enjoy your Gloomhaven and be you. Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to us. We would love to hear from you.